Darren, thanks for your time again, as always. Uh, we all know, of course, about the injury list. Is there any sign of it uh, easing up ahead of the weekend? Yeah, I'm hoping it will. Um, but I, I must say, it's only because of the, the those players and their characters. Um, I don't think it's... I don't think in an ideal world we'd we'd put them or we'd have them for the weekend, but there are players that are have been very forceful, quite aggressive really, in saying, you know, they recognise the situation and um, they want to help and um, they're putting themselves at risk for, for the benefit of the team, myself and you know, and all of the football club. So yeah, I'm hoping I'm I'm hopeful on a couple. Um I'd rather not name them individually, just in case <laughs> I set myself up for a giant fall. But I'm hoping there may be a couple of those uh, 2003 injured that, um, <laughs> that, that that can contribute Saturday, whether it be you know cameo roles or or, or from the start. Yeah, and what does that tell you about the character that they're, they're yeah. they want to do their bit to help the the team? Nah, they're injured, they're not fully fit. What nah. does it tell you about them? Man, magnificent! They're, they're a brilliant group, you know. Lee's passing brought us even closer together. Um, we all recognise the need to try and finish the season strong because we're, we're all, you know, we're, we're pretty honest with ourselves. We're, we're, we're very disappointed with our football season. Um, you take away the uh, the the obvious problems that we've had off the field. Um, you know, we're disappointed in ourselves, and we want to we want to do as best we can to the end of the season and start that process of building a really strong team for, for next year. Yeah, and Alex Bradley, obviously a red card, you were thinking about maybe uh, putting in a, an appeal. Um, did, I, I guess that hasn't happened, we haven't heard anything about that. Is there an update on that situation? We, we've appealed. Um, we have appealed. We think the video footage is good enough um, to, to uh, exonerate him. Good word, that. Good word, Darren. Um, exonerate him from uh, the, the red card um, so yeah so we're hoping there was a very similar tackle late in the second half uh, sorry midway through the second half from an Aldershot player that probably is when you watch it on the videos worse than Alex is and uh, I think he didn't even get a caution um, so we're hoping all those things you know added up we can get Alex out there again Saturday yeah, and when would you hope to find out the, the result of that appeal, Darren? <laughs> um, knowing our governing body, as, it will be as late as possible. <laughs> so, um, yeah, who knows? Who knows? But we'll, um, you know, we're hopeful. We're hopeful that the right thing's going to be done. Yeah, Kings Lynn are next up. What sort of a game are you expecting? <sighs> um, well, it's a you know it's a group of players that are playing with ridiculous freedom, um, because they're you know I would have thought. When they came up, their their sole goal would have been to maintain their their their, their status in the league. Um, I'm assuming that, of course, um, and uh, they've obviously done that with the, the the rules and the regulations of no no relegation from from our division this year. So they're playing with a lot of freedom, um, which translate into some very good football at times. Um, so we you know every game for us at the minute is tough. It, Every game, because of because of our lack of options and availability, it's it's really stretched us physically. We're mentally shattered. Anyway, I don't know how the players have done it. I, I really don't know how they've done it because mentally, I am, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm all over the place mentally and, and in you know lots of different pieces. So how the players are doing, you know, playing ninety minutes every game and. And as you can see with the last couple of games, giving it absolutely everything they've got. Um, Bill with his nose, <laughs> Dagnan wet half an ear, and uh, Albie broke his ribs, <laughs> and Max broke his cheekbone, and all sorts. So, you know, they're, they're really putting themselves into harm's way, and uh, it's all coming at once. But how they've how they've got through this mental fatigue, as whilst playing, is you know, I take my hat off to them. Results haven't been very good of late, but um, I'm still very proud of the way they've c conducted themselves and 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 really pushed on. You know, really tried to push the, you know themselves, their own personal um, characters forward. So I thought I think that's something we should we should be very proud of in our football team. 
Yeah, and Kings Lynn, they, they've, they're leaking a lot of goals, aren't they, this season? I Shall we? It's to do with the way they're playing, like you said. <laughs> Is that potentially a good thing for you? I mean, probably reading too much into not scoring in three games, but could that potentially be a good fixture for you in that respect? Uh, who knows? Who knows? I mean, you know, we're conceding lots of goals. Um, you know, not scoring many, so they, they uh, it would be understandable if they looked at it in a very similar way. Um, so you know, we've we've got to we've got to defend a lot better, um, and it, it's not acceptable that we defend poorly with players playing out of position. But it's understandable. It's not acceptable. It's understandable. You know, Nurfield doesn't get himself into a great position on the back post for the first goal. Um, it's understandable. I think I think everyone can understand that he's a winger playing at right back um, because his his football team needs someone to play right back, uh, and he is the closest thing to that. So, lots of things, lots of lots of elements, lots of crappy excuses, and um, but you know, ones that I think people can understand really. Yeah, and just finally for me, Darren. Fans will be back on on Tuesday. I guess you you're all looking forward to getting fans back in Hewish Park. Uh, and I mean this when I say it. It's probably the first time I've felt any sort of joy around football. Definitely in the last eight weeks. Definitely, if not longer. So it's going to be huge for me. I can't wait. I can't wait to see them. Whether there's ten of them or two thousand, whatever the numbers are, I, I can't wait to see them. I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait to see them back our lads. I can't wait to see them being proud of our lads. I can't wait to win a game and do that song at the end that I can never remember the words to, but I clap when they clap and sing the bits I do know. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait because when I look back at all my favourite bits of last season, and last season I absolutely loved, best year of my life by a country mile. Um, all of those moments were with the fans at the end at Aldershot, with the fans at the end at Solly Old, with the fans at the end at home games. All of those things were just so wonderful and gives you so much energy. It honestly, it energises you beyond belief. Um, and confidence, gives you confidence and all of those things. And um, I can't wait to have that. You know, potentially we can have those moments before the end of the season. I mean, what a nice thing to have, you know, if we can bring them a win. What a nice sort of moment to share to energise us before we before we go again next year with a really vibrant group of players. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good luck for the weekend, Darren, and uh, good luck for that game on Tuesday as well. Thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. Top man. Thank you. Afternoon, Darren. Hi, mate. How are you, right? Yeah, not bad. I'm tired as always. Yeah. Um, Darren, you've been a manager for a number of years now. Would you say this is the worst injury crisis you've ever had in your career? Because it seems that we're always talking about it and yeah. it's not something you can control, it just happens. Yeah, I mean, it must be no, very frustrating. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, forget about the injuries. My worst year in manage, my worst year of my career, full stop. Um, all the things that have happened, I, I wouldn't wish them on my, on my worst enemy. Um, but the injury front, I, I thought Charlie spoke really well after the Aldershot game. I like listening to those senior players when they when they speak after the game. I thought I thought Charlie spoke really well, and, and in and in his 18 years, he's never known anything like a, a season like this year for injury for all the events that have happened. And um, and I think that you know that brought home uh, the reality and the um, the grave, graveness. Is that even a word? How grave the, uh, the 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 situation has been in terms of in terms of injuries and you know this, like the COVID isolation periods we've had more than anyone else of them and the decisions that we've had against us you know I've got I've got another letter today another email saying that they got it wrong um, against um, Halifax Ruben Reed's penalty that stops them the second goal which probably brings us back to one one. I think I sent out 14 points of mistakes of, that we've not got from the referees this year. Um, mm. The sending off with Alex, you know, on on Tuesday. Hopefully that's rescinded. But yeah, it, it, it's not been good fun, Aidan. You know, I'm, I know I'm supposed to always be the epitome of <coughs> energy and lightness for the football club, but you know, on a, 
Uh, it's been very, very tough. I don't think I'm going to have a harder year in management ever again. I won't have a harder year in life, I don't think, than ever again. Um, so, but we've got to get on with it. We've got to get on with it. We're starting to build now for the future. We're starting to build for next season already. You know, Scott and I are talking all the time about what we want this team to look like, how we want it to represent the play, the fans. And, you know, we built up such a lovely connection with our supporters last season. Them not being here, we've lost that, definitely, obviously. But, you know, we want to rebuild that and we want players that they can connect to. And, you know, players will have to leave. Some players that they really like will be going. It's inevitable. And some players that um, they really like on the outside will be coming in, I'm sure. But, you know, we need, we need, to, we need to probably have a, a nice new energy to the group and add to the group keep a lot of what we've got because they're brilliant people and they deserve another crack at it um and, and then we need to we need to add some real vibrance real vibrance well, you, you say about players in and out you, you know, alfie lloyd's going to quiz park rangers and um presumably financially that was good for the club a yeah, brilliant deal absolutely brilliant deal couldn't say no could not say no yeah. I, I think it's the best deal this club's in terms of monetary value, I'm not, it's not my opinion. Um, in terms of monetary value, I think it's the best deal they've done for four or five years. Um, mm. If you look back over the sales and that, so it's a really good deal up front. Um, it's a very good deal for if Alfie is successful. Um, it's a brilliant deal for Alfie because he's going to get paid a lot more than what he was going to get paid for us ne next year. It's a great deal for him in terms of his football career and his education because he's going to get another couple of years in a, in a developmental state um, and, and that's what Alfie needs. It's a brilliant move for him personally and one we're all really pleased for him to have because he is the most wonderful human being you could ever work, work with. Um, a brilliant guy, brilliant, brilliant chap and uh, we're all delighted for him that, that the club got a very good deal out of it, a very, very good deal out of it and, and Alfie got a very good deal out of it. So everyone won. You know, everyone knows we're in COVID times, COVID financial times, we'll call it, and um, and and money is a premium. So we need to uh, we needed to we needed to do it. QPR were excellent to deal with, very very professional. And you know, what one thing that I'm very proud of this year is that we've sold three players for the football club and brought in what's moving on to hundreds of thousands of pounds. Um, in in remuneration, so you know that's 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 all good. So that'll only that'll only create a stronger foundation for the future, and that's what's going to have to that's what's going to have to happen. You know, we, we're a football club, and the players we've sold have all improved. You know, under these conditions, and the club have benefited from from the sale of those players. So that's like any business, any trading business that's that's exactly what's going to happen but I'm delighted for Alfie he's a brilliant kid absolutely brilliant kid and, and and what we've seen over the years so many mistakes with young players in terms of they get signed and they spend the next two years out on loan and then they get released you know well, what's, well that's no good to anyone so you know we're in a position next year where every penny every pound is going to be have to be spent very well and um you know, if players have to contribute to the first team, if they can't contribute to the first team, then we can't, we can't have them with us. Um, and and you know, in the same same breath, Toby Stevens has, has has done so well since he's come in with us. Do you think that the um, lack of relegation from the league now is going to have a, a detrimental effect on the games? I mean, talking about Kingsley, they can't go down, whereas they would be in a position where they might have been worried to death about them going down. That could have an effect on the way they play you. I mean, I know it doesn't affect you because you're not going to go down either, but nonetheless, it's it's not sort of going to make a good game, is it, when you've got a team that's uh, yeah. playing like that? What is a good game for us? A good game for us is winning. A good game for us is obviously playing good football. Um, I can't, unfortunately, I haven't got the headspace right now to, to worry about Kings Lynn or how they foresee winning or losing or relegation and promotion. I just think, you know, we've got, to, I really want to finish the season strong, three home games out of four. And I want to, I want to, I really want to inject some energy uh, into this group. I want to inject some energy into the football club. We've all suffered and now's the time to really, you know, start being brighter 
and it's hard, you know, it's really hard to, to, to produce that because, again, I can only speak for me, but, you know, mentally it's been, you know, a marathon, an absolute marathon and a long journey. So, but we've got to try and do it. And I know with fans in, I'm going to feel a lot more energetic. I love, you know, I've always said from day one that whenever I was here as a opposition manager, in the past, I always felt that anticipation in the stand, that assertiveness in the stand, and you know that that used to really, really get me firing. And um, I know it has for the players as well. You know, when we're when we're in real flow and good momentum, and we're attacking that Thatcher's end, and that stand is lifting the whole football club. It's you know we've missed it so much, and every player in the world will say the same thing. It's it's a very it's been a very different environment without them. Well, I wish you all the best on Saturday, uh, Darren. Um, go and get your songbook out, get a bit of practice in, ready for Tuesday night, that's all I can say. Smashing, how good would that be? Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Darren. Thank you. Hi, Darren, how are you doing? I'm okay, mate. You? Yeah, not too, thank you. You just yeah. mentioned Alfie and Toby, and you've got a relatively young squad already that's developing all the time. Is it safe to say the future's looking bright with a couple of good additions? Well, again, Charlie spoke so brilliantly after the game. The experience they're getting or have had this year on and off the pitch has been huge, absolutely huge. And we'll see the benefit of that. But we've got to just ride this, you know, this difficult time. We've just got to get through this difficult time. And I, I had the same at my previous clubs. Um, they, they'll only be better for these life experiences and they'll only be better for their football experiences. And, yeah, it is exciting. I'm really excited about Knowles and Bradley and players like that, Hunty, you know, they're going to be brilliant players for the club and they're going to go on and have good careers. And if, you know, like I said, our record continues to um, uh, to, to prove so, then we're going to develop lots of players that are going to benefit the football club in terms of compensation and things like that. So, no, it is bright. We need to make sure that we keep that character because, you know, the team that fell out of the Football League was a team that was devoid of character, in my opinion. And um, we need to make sure that we keep that resilience and, you know, those really strong senior player characters. But there's also young players out there with that real strength of character. You know, you look at Knowles, you look at Tom Knowles and his strength of character for being such a little flighty athlete winger. I mean, he's as tough as old boots, Tom. Absolutely brave as you like, brave as a lion. Takes the ball all the time, gets kicked, gives it out now, as we can all see. He's a feisty little fella. And, um, you know, we, we like going through that development stage with them. And this team was always going to need to have a transitional period because, you know, the the financial footprint of the football club has changed so dramatically. Been out, being out of the football league now for the two years, COVID hitting. So we, we're going to have to produce organically from these young players in order to, to be a competitive team next year. But where where will how well will Tom Knowles be playing in eight months time well if his acceleration of progression is the same as what it's been this year what what a player we're going to have I mean he's going to be the most exciting player outside the football league isn't he so he's going to be a good player for us so and, and the same with Alex you know and the same with Alex and the same with Hunty and Joe Quigley still a young player even though he looks about 49 years old he, he's still a young player and um, you know he's making really great strides as well so no, it's an ex you know I like I like development it's important, very important, that we have a right blend and a nice balance to the players, um, and, uh, and we get some seniority in it as well. You and Terry were able to step away uh, momentarily with the training with the youngsters at Marriott. How good was that? And is it just part of your kind of initiative to give back to the community? I know you were very hot on that when you first arrived. Look, for, you know, for, for me, um, whenever I've been asked to coach. Um, or you know, work with younger teams. Terry used to ask me to take some academy teams last year, so I did that. Um, and then um, you know, a, uh, an associate of Terry's asked him to if we could come on down and do a session before they had a big game. And the fact that they've had COVID and they've not been able to play as much, so you know, we're more than happy to try and meet people's uh, you know requests for some coaching and some influence with the young people. And for me personally, when you know all my other jobs I've always gone in and coached the academy teams to relax so for me it's you know it's relaxing working with young people they've got this such wonderful energies about them it's very innocent you know they still see football as, as it should be seen 
but isn't when you get older. It's very romantic still for them, the path of football of a footballer. And um, you know, it's really enjoyable to to help where we can and try and do something that influences them in a positive way. And when we've been asked to, we've you know, we've we'd like to we like to meet people's needs if we can. Um, you know, so it's a it's I, I enjoy it. Like I said, I enjoy it. it. Relaxes me. I can kind of unwind from first team manager pressures, <laughs> which is thirty six hours a day, nine days a week, and um, <laughs> and um, you know, and it, it just it just kind of takes you back to what football really is. It's a, an unbelievable sport. Brings people so close together socially. Brings lots of different types of people together, and um, you know that's great. It's, it was brilliant to be involved, and we're very thankful to being invited, and you know, and being able to help if we if we can.